again thank you for the invitation to this Congress. My paper is um, a little blog, but I try to summarize. Particular councils, as you know, extraordinary assemblies of bishops of a certain territory convened to take governance decisions, especially the legislative ones, have become relatively rare in the Catholic Church, while Episcopal conferences, whose jurisdiction in terms of magisterium and governance is limited as a matter of principle, have been so successful that they have requested replaced the celebration of particular councils. Therefore, the hypothesis that the death of particular councils is due to the establishment and development of the Episcopal conferences should be rejected. This has been clearly expressed by the Second Vatican Council that consider particular councils not replaceable by the Episcopal conferences and believe that these latter were not a modernization of the councils. Particular councils are groupings of particular churches gathered within the same Episcopal conference of the ecclesiastical province, with powers of government, particularly the legislative one, set to respond in the pastoral needs of the people of God. Their main goal is to provide for the increase of faith, the coordination of pastoral activities of common interest, the regulation of customs and the introduction or the defense of ecclesiastical discipline, always without prejudice to the universal law. Under the denomination, particular councils, the legislator introduces two different institutions. The provincial council, which includes the grouping of particular churches in an ecclesiastical province, the plenary council, which is the grouping of particular churches within an Episcopal conference, regardless of the extension of the conference in one or more country, countries. Particular councils are given governance functions, especially the legislative one. Therefore, by virtue of this power, it is their job to take appropriate and necessary decisions to increase the faith to agree on a common pastoral activity, to reform customs, to maintain, introduce, or ensure uniformity in pastoral discipline within the same territory. <coughs> Even if in their own territory particular councils provide for the pastoral needs of the people of God, they always act safeguarding the universal law of the church and avoiding the unnecessary limitation of the powers of the individual bishops and the portion of the people of God entrusted to them. A plenary council is to be celebrated whenever it seems necessary or useful to the bishops' conference with the approval of the apostolic see. A provincial council is to be celebrated whenever it seems opportune in the judgment of the majority of the diocesan and bishops of the province. However, when the boundaries of an ecclesiastical province coincide with the territory of a nation, the Latin Code should be applied for the plenary councils. According to a new norm, the provincial council shouldn't be convoked while the metropolitan seat is vacant, but it's not prohibited to suspend it during the celebration or after the convocation has already occurred. The Second Vatican Council sees the bishops as successors of the apostles, as we know, recalling the importance of the cooperation among them for the good of the whole church and the particular churches. To facilitate this solicitude, referring to the practice of the early centuries of the church, the decree Christus Dominus Earnestly desires that the venerable institution of synods and councils flourish with fresh vigor. In such a way, faith will be deepened and discipline preserved more fittingly and efficaciously in the various churches as the needs of the times require. Despite the ecclesiology of communion, 
that characterized the Latin code, the periodicity for the convocation of a provincial council is not established. Therefore, it depends on objective grounds evaluated by the bishops of the ecclesiastical province. During the revision of the code, the question of consulting the Apostolic See for the celebration of the provincial councils has been raised. In the 1967 uh, code, this was not mentioned because the general law that prescribed its celebration every 20 years dispensed from consulting the Apostolic See. In the case of an ecclesiastical province whose boundaries coincide with the territory of a nation, the approval of the Apostolic See for the celebration of the councils is a request. The scope of the jurisdiction of the provincial and plenary councils was already determined by Canon 37 of the Apostles, bis in anno sinodus episcoporum fiat. While confirming the general material competencies, the Fourth Lateran Council assigned as a primary task to the Provincial Council to apply universal law, both pontifical and conciliar. It used to be an institution for an autonomous management of ecclesial provincial life, and then it was uh, turned into an institution which is devoted to the preparation and implementation of the important conciliar and legislative events of the Universal Church. The Council of Trent accepted the principle of general jurisdiction of provincial councils. A new incentive for particular councils came after 1850, when, as a result of the weakening of jurisdictionalism, particular councils were regarded as the genuine form of ecclesiastical synodality. In the 1917, um, thank you very much, called, accepted this provision. Patres in concilio plenario per provinciali congregati studiose inquirant at ac decernant, que ad fidei incrementum ad moderandos mores, ad corrigendos abusus, ad controversas componentas, ad una e ad empe disciplina servandam per inducentam, opportuna fore pro suo quisque territorio videato. Therefore, according to the Fourth Lateran Council, the Council of Trent and the 1917 Code, it is within the competency, competencies of the particular council to regulate the customs, correct the faults, set of disputes, but always moving within the bounds of the doctrine of the Universal Church. This is also the position of the actual Latin Code when it indicates that the purpose of the particular council is to take care that provision is made for the pastoral needs of the people of God as part of its territory. The council may then issue all the rules and directives deemed necessary. Salvo Center, Euro Universal Ecclesia for the increase of faith and morals the organization of common festival action and the ecclesiastical discipline which is to be observed, promoted and protected. The norms on the provincial council, both the ones concerning the offices that integrate it and those relating to its functioning, are few. For the functioning, it is necessary to follow the general rules governing this matter. The Code of Canon Law does not determine, as we uh, saw, the time for the celebration of the plenary council, but it merely prescribes celebratory quotes in the ipsi episcopalum conferentiae necessarium to utile viteatum. The Citus Studiorum, which drew up the scheme the Popolo Dei, aimed to establish a compulsory celebration of the plenary council every 20 years. However, after a discussion, it was concluded that the bishops' conference should assess the need and opportunities for it. The norm is best suited to various circumstances that uh, may arise, and the fact that any fixed date has been established highlights the need for the approval of the Apostolic See at Casum. 
we consider the rule of particular councils. Therefore, on a spontaneous initiative of some bishops from different countries and regions, more frequent meetings were organized to communicate, examine and look for forms of apostolate more suited to new pastoral needs. Thus, the Holy See approved the new organisms which took the name of Episcopal Conferences. In view of the effectiveness of these assemblies, the Second Vatican Council considered it to be the supremely fitting that everywhere bishops belonging to the same nation or region form an association which would meet at fixed times. Thus, when the insights of prudence and experience have been shared and the views exchanged, there will be emerge a whole union of energies in the service of the common good of the churches. In the wake of this exhortation, Ecclesi Sante prescribed that wherever the Episcopal Conferences did not exist, they had to be established as soon as possible. A new permanent mandatory institution for the whole church entered in the ecclesiastical juridical order. Recalling a considered statement in Christus Dominus, Canon in the Latin Pope presents the definition of, of the Episcopal Conference as follows. A conference of bishops, a permanent institution, is a group of bishops of the same nation or certain territory who jointly exercise certain pastoral functions for the Christian faithful of their territory in order to promote the greater good which the Church offers to humanity, especially through forms of, and programs of the apostolate fittingly adapted to the circumstances of time and place according to the norm of law. And now the main question of my uh, contribute. The position of particular councils compared to the Episcopal <coughs> provinces. Without any doubt, the celebration of particular councils has become a rare ecclesial event, and the Episcopal conferences have come to take that place. This was also what uh, John Paul II said in the post synod of apostolic exhortation, Pastoris Gregis recommending that the place of the particular councils shouldn't be taken by Episcopal conferences, since they are different institutions for nature and purposes. The purpose of particular councils, as we uh, saw, is to provide more effectively for the pastoral needs of the people of God in their own territory, in order not to damage the universal law they can decide what seems opportune for the increase of the faith, the organization of common pastoral action, and the regulation of morals and of the common ecclesiastical discipline, which is to be observed, promoted, and protected. Instead, the bishops' conference, a permanent body, is the assembly of bishops of a nation of territory who jointly exercise certain pastoral functions, determined for the faithful of the territory. Ordinary and specific function of the bishops is to research and agree on common forms and methods of pastoral action, advantages and suitable to the circumstances of time and place, having directive nature. The conference may issue general decrees in respect of authorized matters, both motu proprio by the Apostolic See and at the request of the same conference. In these cases, such decrees to be validly issued must be supported in plenary meeting by at least two-thirds of favorable votes. In his diocese, when he doesn't consider it appropriate for his particular church, the bishop may dispense in special cases and for good cause from the decision of the majority of the bishops especially in cases where neither the universal law nor a special apostolic mandate granted to the bishops' conference the power to issue decrees. Therefore, the conference or <coughs> its president cannot act validly in the name of all the bishops unless every bishop has given his consent. Something different 
is the possibility that the bishops' conference derogates from what the particular councils established, perhaps after the celebration of a council. However, usually the doctrine doesn't seem to admit such a possibility. Particular councils have legislative power according to the areas of responsibility set out in Canon 445, while Bishops' Conference issued general decrees only for the matters concerning universal law or approved by the Apostolic See. In this sense, we can say that the Bishops' Conference exercises regular, regular, regulatory powers more than the legislative ones. The president of the Episcopal Conference then is not a superior like the Metropolitan in the Provincial Council. Other differences between the two institutes concern the convocation. The plenary meeting within the Episcopal Conference are held at least once a year and whenever special circumstances require this. The convocation of the plenary council takes place when this is necessary or useful to the Bishops' Conference with the approval of the Apostolic See. So the main question, why did particular councils give way to the Episcopal Conferences? <coughs> Last point. Why did particular councils give way to the Episcopal conferences? It is not easy to find a satisfactory answer to the question in the title. There is clear evidence that some facts are worthy of attention, as by analyzing them it's possible to give some answers. Acknowledging that particular councils have been solemn ecclesial events expression of episcopal collegiality with the legislative and disciplinary purposes, and that therefore their deliberations were made through a procedure with binding resolutions, the bishops conference established with mainly practical purposes produced a legislation with a different binding force, depending on the case. And in fact, the first reason which led the Episcopal Conferences to take the place of particular councils is a practical one. The conferences, as newly created bodies, seemed more agile and uh, with a more immediate intervention compared to the periodicity of the procedure of the councils. Even if it's important to mention that uh, while carrying out certain tasks, even the Episcopal Conferences had quite complex statutory procedures. See, for example, the approval and enact enactment of doctrinal documents in accordance with the procedures of the motu proprio apostolic source. In this respect, in doctrine, someone has concluded that the oblivion of particular council, councils is due to the fact that the conferences seemed suitable means to solve instances and problems and enter without any problems in the institutional organization. And because it's not possible to exclude that the bishops saw the councils as limiting their power of governance, mm -hmm. its exclusivity and autonomy compared to local <laughs> intermediate powers. However, Someone else saw the periodicity and better agility of Episcopal conferences as the opportunity for a good preparation both for the Provincial Council and the Plenary Council and uh, after the celebration of these, the best way to make up for the updating of legislation and its adaptation to the needs of each diocese. Actually, a second reason which can adequately explain the crisis of particular councils can be found in the ecclesiological dimension that the councils represent both as collegial dimension of the Episcopal ministry, both as a communion among particular churches. In addition to the fear that these intermediate instances can deprive the Episcopal authority, 
there is also the fear that they may act in the same way in respect of the premarital authority, when exercised personally by the Roman pontiff and in the Episcopal College. One interesting example suggests that certain powers of particular councils could be attributed to the Episcopal conferences. This is an innovation that changed the rule of the Latin code. For instance, in the case of the offer for the celebration of Mass, which according to what established by Canons 952 and 1264, can be set by the provincial councils or by the meeting of the bishops of the ecclesiastical province by special decree. In Italy, in individual cases, this competence was transferred to the regional episcopal conferences. The entry into force is regulated differently. In the case of conciliar determination, it shall enter into force immediately. Why? In the case of the determination by the bishops' conference, it needs a prior recognition of the apostolic see. The crisis of particular councils should be seen in the more general crisis, which doesn't lead to a proper development of local legislation. Since the Church today does not seem to give priority to issues of a legislative nature, the result is the widespread disregard of bishops for the celebration of the councils that combined with the structural weakness of the ecclesiastical province which has no effective governance, revealed the unlessness of particular councils and uh, of the metropolitans. Only with the recent motto proprio Mitis Judex Dominus Jesus, the metropolitan bishop in the Latin Church has increased the competencies in the field of traditional power of governance, which in the code seem to be reduced to a system of disputism and overseas. In conclusion, the attempts at clarifying the nature and powers of particular councils and bishops' conferences cannot evade very important issues, such as those concerning the ecclesial value of these so-called intermediate structures of communion among the churches and the nature of the intermediate authority. However, we should keep in mind that the councils and conferences uh, are moved by a spirit of collegiality, but while in the first collegiality is effective, in the others is affective. Thank you for your attention.